Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a cool new product to show you that'll make it faster and easier than ever before to make light up cards. My husband and I developed the Power Pack and as part of our grand opening, we're celebrating with Mega Blog Hop. Below I've got links to 20 of your favorite bloggers that are participating. During our grand opening, we've got a bunch of prizes you can win. We've also got free shipping in the US or $5 off international orders. Go ahead and head over to my blog for all of the details. If you are just here to see how to make a light up card circuit using the power pack, skip ahead to 13 minutes. Otherwise, I'm going to show you how I made this adorable little wedding card. The first thing that I'm going to do is tape down a piece of watercolor paper. I've cut this to five and a half inches square. That will be the size of my finished card. This is going to be my background. And I am taping it down with some blue masking tape onto my stamp platform. You'll notice that it's got quarter inch grooves all across the lid. That just helps me get a nice even border onto my watercolor paper here. Once I've got the edges all taped down, I'm going to peel it off and move it over to my craft mat. I could have painted it on the stamp platform but I didn't want any of those grooves to imprint onto my paper, so I just moved it over here to my craft mat. And I've got my Prima watercolors, and I'm only using two colors, just the yellow. I'm creating a, a wash on the background with the yellow. I'm going from light to dark, or rather dark to light from the bottom up to the top. And then I'll come in with just a smidge of this orange and blend it in a little bit and that'll give me a nice ombre effect. This is a really smooth background, so I'm gonna add another layer, but before I do, I wanna dry the paper just a little bit so that when I add my next layers of color, I can get more lines and texture in there. And I'm just gonna come back in with a little more orange and a little more yellow, and it's not a dry brush, but there's not a lot of water this time around. Once I'm happy with the background, I'll dry it up a bit. And then I'm gonna move it into a splatter box. I'm dripping on some clear, clean water. And then I'm gonna come in with my Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine. This stuff is gorgeous. If you have not played with it, you're gonna love it but it does get all over the place and it's a little difficult to clean up. But man, that is a bright gold. I love the way that this looks. So I'm gonna let that dry completely and then I can peel back my tape and I've got my background. Pretty, right? All right, now I'm gonna show you how I die cut the elements. I'm not gonna make you watch me die cut all of them, but I wanna show you the pieces that I use. I've got some nesting circles out of my uh, circle dies there. That's two inches, two and a quarter, and two and a half. They complement this Echo Park diamond die set nicely. And that congrats is from Happy Doodle. I'm gonna cut all of my pieces out. Um, I've got some different specialty papers here, some gold and silver glitter paper, some clear vellum, or I'm sorry, some transparent white vellum, and then some clear acetate. I've also got some yellow cardstock there that I'm gonna cut the background layers of congrats out of. And then I have some foam, fun foam, that I cut uh, my ring pieces out of as well. I'm sure you don't wanna watch me cut them all out. So I'll just show you the pieces after I cut them. I've got my card base, my background. Again, that's a five and a half inch card base and a five and a half inch square of watercolor paper. My congrats, I cut out three times from that yellow card stock. And then again from the gold glitter card stock. And I will layer them all together to get a nice thick sentiment down at the bottom of my card. I cut the large, or I'm sorry, the small and medium rings out. Uh, two layers of fun foam and one layer of gold mirror cardstock. And then I used the small and the large circles to cut out um, the man's ring. Again, two layers of fun foam, one layer of gold mirror cardstock. 
And then for the diamond on top, I cut out two of the solid pieces of fun foam. And I also cut out a clear piece of acetate and a white piece of vellum. I'm going to layer those two together so that you get a shiny diamond background. And then the detail piece is cut out of silver glitter cardstock. And what I'm going to do here is figure out where I'm going to put uh, my battery and my switch for my light up card. So I'm getting my rings in place and I know that I want that switch and battery to be underneath the man's ring. So I'm going to grab that medium ring or circle die there. And I'm going to line it up onto my background paper. Make sure that, that the uh, man's ring will cover it up. And then I can tape it down and run it through my Big Shot. Now this is a watercolored background and those colors are not always um, super permanent. So I'm covering up the, uh, the piece of watercolor paper with just a scrap piece of paper and that will protect my top cutting plate from any color transferring to it. I do the same thing when I run glitter paper through there so that if it imprints any um, texture it'll go into the paper not into my top cutting plate because that could uh, mar other paper in the future. So once I've got that cut out I can go ahead and start stacking up um, my dies here, my die cut pieces, and building up the elements. You saw me take a piece of tape and I use that to just grab any stray hairs um, that are sometimes on the on the edges of our die cut pieces. Then I'm going to bring in my glue sponge. This product is new to me. I saw it at Creativation and it's super cool. It's a sponge that's filled up with PVA glue and I'm still getting the hang of it. I think I stored it wrong so I've got a, a dried ring of glue at the top. Um, I'm going to play with it a little bit more and I will give you guys a full review of this soon because so far I really love it. There are some things that it's not great for but some things that it is super fabulous for, like stacking up die cuts like this. It's so much faster than trying to apply glue to the whole back of the, the word. And you saw me use my tweezers just to, to push the die cut into the sponge. That keeps my fingers out of the glue. And I'm going to repeat, repeat the process a couple times here so that I have a nice thick sentiment. And notice how I cut these background pieces out of yellow paper. That's just so that when the gold is sitting on top, if you see the edges, the colors complement each other. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? Now I'm going to grab the two uh, larger rings and I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to these. Uh, PVA glue works fine for this. It glues foam together nicely. And I'll go ahead and make sure that those are even. And I've got a nice heavy block to hold everything flat while it dries. Now I'm going to grab the two thinner rings out of the foam and I'm going to glue those together as well. And I thought that I could use the glue sponge for this, but I wasn't picking up enough glue this way. It's a little too narrow to grab as much glue as I needed. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring in my PVA glue in a fine line bottle. It's the same glue, it's just in a different form, or rather, in a different um, applicator. And this time I got a little too much glue on, but it's no big deal. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue the two solid foam diamond pieces together. And I decided in just a second here that I did not like the, the beige foam for the diamond. So I am going to switch that out to white foam, which you see there. It's, it's two layers glued together. And I think it reflects back nicer. It looks like a, a bright white diamond rather than sort of a, a yellowish one. 
and you would not want the point of the diamond to cut into your finger. So I am going to cut the tip of this off and I'm using that smallest circle so that the arch will match the arch of the ring. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it out of all of my pieces. Now that fun foam is already two layers thick, so I'm not going to run that through the big shot. I just use my scissors to trim that up. And I'll layer this up and make sure that everything lines up nicely. And it does. So this white foam, I am going to go ahead and trim out most of the inside. I just really want to create a box or a double layer of foam to hold my diamond up from the bottom. I'm really creating a shadow box for the light to sit in. And after I get that cut out, I will go ahead and glue the vellum on top. Now I could have done the same thing using foam tape, but with foam tape, sometimes you get edges that show gaps in your foam, that kind of stuff. And so I like to die cut pieces like this so that they are um, perfect or they look great from the sides, especially since it's two layers, you have a tendency to see some of that foam. And you saw me apply glue to the back of the glitter paper here. I can go ahead and stick that onto the clear acetate and then flip it over and add glue only behind the glitter paper. And that way it won't show through when I glue it onto the vellum. Now we've got our diamond shadow box here. And we can assemble the rest of the ring. So I've got that double layer of foam. Again, you could use foam tape as well. It's just much easier, especially for curves like this, to die cut fun foam than to try to mess with foam tape. And because there's a double layer of foam on the diamond, I want to cut out a notch in the ring and the foam in the ring so that it can all be one even level piece of um, piece of an embellishment there. The ring is all going to be one layer. You see that? I don't want the foam sticking up behind more foam. And I'll go ahead and mess with it till it's perfect and let it dry a little bit. And now there's a little gap at the bottom of the diamond. So I'm going to bring in the, the piece of white foam that I cut out and I will cut just about an eighth inch little piece of it and I will squeeze it into place. That gives me uh, more structural support so that the ring is fully supported in the back. And also it's going to finish off that box so no light um, shines down through the bottom of the ring. It's all going to reflect back up through the top, through the vellum there, and bounce around on that white foam. Okay, so now it's time to figure out the placement for our light and our battery pack. Um, I'm bringing in my two rings and I want to make sure that they are right where I want them to be. And then I'm going to mark onto my card front where I want the hole for the light to be. And I'll get all my elements out of the way. And I can bring in my anywhere hole punch and just punch through it. Now I've got the hole for where the light will be. And I'm going to line my card front up onto my card base. And this is my power pack. It's the battery holder and the switch. It's already one piece for you. It's very simple to use. I'm going to put it in place. I'm going to line it all up here and um, figure out exactly where I want the, uh, the power pack and the button to be. I know that I don't want um, the, the button to be right in the center because I want the ring to look like, like a ring, not like one giant push here button. So I'm going to grab my um, uh, pencil here and I'm going to mark the card base where I want the power pack to sit with that button down towards the corner a little bit, not in the center. 
and then I can just get it lightly traced and I want to make sure to mark the positive and negative side just so that I remember um, to run positive to positive and negative to negative. I'll show you that in a second here. And I also want to mark where I want to stick my LED sticker. That's where my light's going to be, right in the center there. So now it's time to go ahead and build our circuit. These are the Chibitronic LED stickers. They come in our kit, or you may already have some. Uh, notice that the positive and negative side are clearly marked on there, and the LED is that little yellow square right in the center. You want to make sure that your positive side is going to be um, in line with the positive side of your power pack, and the negative will line up with the negative side. And then I'm going to stick the sticker down and make sure that the light is coming up right through the center of that hole, and it is. So we're good there. I don't have to move it. Now I can stick my power pack in place. And guys, I left this in real time just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. There's no tricks of the camera or anything, and I didn't speed up through this portion of the video at all because I want you to see how quick and easy this really does come together. So I'm using some super tape here. It is a nice double stick tape that's strong. You can use a wet glue if you want, but make sure that it doesn't seep onto those silver pads. And then go ahead and stick it down in place. And make sure the light is nice and stuck in place as well. And then you're going to connect the two pieces with copper tape. This copper tape comes in our kit. It has conductive adhesive. That just means that electricity can jump through the adhesive um, and run along the copper tape there. So you can connect um, you can connect your power pack and your LED by running copper tape on top of it if you want. And again remember the plus side to plus side, minus side to minus side very easy and I'm just going to tape it down. I gave myself a little bit of a tail um, before the power pack and I'm going to give myself a little bit of a tail after my LED sticker. That way if I've touched the copper tape at all with my fingers and if I've transferred any skin cells or oil or anything, um, any fingerprints that would basically get onto the, uh, the copper tape, that's not going to be where the pads are. Notice that I slid that battery out of the way. When I um, stick my tape down, I can slide the battery back in place, and there is a gap there. It, it's not touching. And now I'm going to run the positive side to the positive. And again, I've got a little bit of a tail with my copper tape hanging off one side of the, um, the power pack. And then I'm going to come up, and you can curve this tape. This tape has conductive adhesive, so you can tear it and stick it back to itself. Um, but every time you do that, you add a little resistance to the line. It's best if you just bend or curve your tape. And let me show you how to bend the tape, it, or uh, fold the tape, rather. Uh, it may seem a, a little counterintuitive. The first thing that you do is bend it in the opposite direction of where you're going to want it to go to. So I wanted it to come down, so the first thing I did was bend up. And now I want it to go to the left, so the first thing I'm going to do is bend it to the right. When I do that, the, the tape is sticky side up. So I'll fold it one more time and then my sticky side is down again. If you are if you just bent it the one time, if you just folded it the one time, your sticky side would be up in the air, and then that would be hard to work with. So I'm going to burnish it down with my fingers, and then I can press the button. Apparently I needed to clean up first, and then I'll press the button. <laughs> but you see? That's how easy it is to make a circuit. Simple, right? Okay, 
So now we can get to covering it up. And when I put my card front on top of it, a funny thing happened. The, uh, the light kind of act, acted a little bit flaky. Whenever that happens, that means that I've got um, a connection issue here. So I just needed to push it down with my fingers a little bit more and make sure that it's stuck nice and flat. And then it's good to go. I press that button like a hundred times more to make sure that it was uh, not going to be a flaky circuit. And I'm convinced that it's perfectly fine now. So I'm going to add some glue to the back of my card front. Or rather my background, I guess it is. It's my card front and my background. And I will glue that in place. And again, I'm pressing that button because it's a lot of fun to do. <laughs> And now it's time to cover it up. I know that I want to put a push here stamp onto this yellow piece. I've got this Lawn Fawn set and I'm gonna use this little round one that says push here. And I'm gonna line up my watercolor paper so that the lines are matched up. The pattern is, is back in place. And then I will put this stamp on top of the paper right over the button. And I can pick it up, transfer it to my Misty, and then I'm going to stamp it with some fossilized amber Distress Oxide ink. That color complements this color scheme perfectly. And I went ahead and stamped it twice. Now I can glue the gold ring to the yellow circle. And remember I used the medium circle, the middle circle there, to cut it out so that I had a little bit of um, room to, to move it around if I needed to. And also so that I know when I glue my foam in place, it will completely cover the opening. And now I can glue the ring on top of the foam. And I'm going to make sure that that button is right on top, or the push here is right on top of the button. Now it's time to glue the diamond ring in place. And I want to make sure that the, the light is right down in the bottom of my diamond. And remember it has a double layer of foam as well, so where it overlaps the other gold ring, I'm going to just cut a notch and peel away that foam there. And I constantly double check it. I want to make sure everything lines up nicely and nothing is um, at an angle that I don't want. Then I'm going to hold the light on while I stick it down. And if any glue seeps out onto the mirror cardstock, you want to clean it up right away. It's easier that way. And the very last thing to do is to glue my sentiment in place. I love this congrats. It's a beautiful brush script from Heffy Doodle. I love it. So now I'm going to weigh it down while it dries, and then the card is done. That finishes up this card. I think it's going to be perfect for a wedding gift. Now don't forget for our grand opening, we've got a mega blog hop going on. The more blogs that you visit and comment on, the more chances you'll have to win some great prizes. Plus, during the hop, you can get free or reduced shipping. Go ahead and head over to pearblossompress.com for all the details. I've got links to all of those fabulous bloggers below. Um, and then go ahead and check out some more of the videos in our hop that are using the Power Pack. I've got a whole playlist for you right here. As always, my friend, thanks for watching.